Emergency service workers are often the first on the scene when something's gone wrong. The things they witness can be violent and traumatic, and the impact can be significant. We see these higher rates of things like post-traumatic stress disorder than the general community. They don't always transition out because they're being medically discharged. Sometimes, in fact, most often, they're just leaving. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Back in July, a group of current and former police, rescue workers and paramedics set off on a long walk from the Red Centre to Canberra, asking for better mental health services and changes to how PTSD is treated by insurance. Victorians, Tasmanians, Western Australia. Look, there's a whole bunch of system things that can be improved for how I was dealt with, how I may have been able to avoid ending up where I ended up. As a rescuer in the New South Wales Police, Matt O'Brien's work exposed him to confronting situations. You can't stop having to go to the, the base of a cliff where someone's jumped off. You can't stop going to those types of jobs. Someone has to do that work, but those people can be looked after a lot better than they are. When Matt first had his catastrophic breakdown, um, it was up to me to find really good GPs, really good psychologists. I would ring and ring and ring their receptionists in tears daily, begging for an appointment, saying, I can't keep my husband alive on my own much longer. I need your help. First responders in this country are nothing without their families. King's Cross was my first station, but... After nearly three months, the walkers reached the final stage of their journey and set up camp just outside Canberra. Because I was a fingerprint detective, I had to kid up and go into the mortuary room and, and, and assist the pathologist with the with the autopsy, like to extract bullets, and I loved it. But then you go back to the office, then they'd say, you got another job. It's like, no, no, wait, no, hang on, I've just been seven hours in a room with three dead bodies blown apart. Beyond feeling poorly cared for by management while they were on the job, many of these people went through protracted fights for workers' compensation trying to prove their PTSD was a consequence of their work. I can tell you what keeps him up at night, and it's not that his, parent, his dad left when he was two. When he was... <laughs> it's all the other stuff. They want the law changed, so the system assumes that cause and effect. That's the message they came to Canberra to deliver. You sign up to be a, a, join the police or the Ambos, fireys, you have a full medical, they look at you, they go, yep, you're, you're fit and ready to do this and then you develop PTSD during your time serving in that role. And then you've got to then prove that it's from doing that. Like, th that is a ridiculous system. You've got business saying the changes are bad, unions are saying they don't go far enough. The first responders find their case caught in a political maelstrom. You've just got a minority of employers that are exploiting a number of loopholes. An economy destroying piece of legislation. Laws to reverse the onus of proof on PTSD are included in a large and complex bill currently before the Parliament. Its other chapters, designed to stop firms undercutting wages with labour hire and to extend new minimum standards to workers in the gig economy, are being strongly resisted by business groups and the Coalition. Why would you hold up helping first responders suffering from PTSD unless you had a political motive? The Albanese government is determined to pass the bill as a whole, but faces pressure to split it from the Senate crossbench. It's a beast of a bill, you know, there's, there's sort of 20 different parts of this. And so my view is, let's deal with these other things that aren't contentious now and take the time on, on the other stuff. Delivery riders, folks working in the gig economy, some of them are awfully exploited. Isn't there urgency for those people too? Well, you could take them out too and deal with them, deal with them separately. Like, I, I don't agree with big omnibus bills. Because most emergency services are state agencies, the change to Commonwealth laws will only really help the Australian Federal Police. But a 2019 Senate inquiry said federal and state governments should work together on a consistent national approach to PTSD claims, as well as early intervention mental health services and proper data on first responder suicides. We're finally seeing the presumption around PTSD change. That's one of 14. There's 13 other recommendations that need to be implemented. 
A spokesperson for Workplace Relations Minister Tony Burke told 7.30 the government never wanted any of the measures in this bill to be delayed. They see the entire thing as urgent. But the Senate's already voted to delay its consideration until February next year, and that's a long time to wait. The pressure to split the bill is only going to intensify. I don't think they were fine back in the day. We just didn't know about it. And that was playing out. The consequences of that were playing out behind closed doors or at the local pub. And now we have a far greater understanding of the effects of it and we can do something about it. On their arrival in Canberra, the walkers are met by the Governor-General. Being aware is not enough. Uh, more needs to be done. Indeed, last uh, Saturday, Linda and I were in Perth uh, with our AFP crew and we got the word that a young AFP officer had committed suicide on that day. And Matt O'Brien. It's completely overwhelming to think that we've started way back when we did in the centre of Australia and now we're here in these grounds of Government House. Moments like this give you hope and uh, the right people are listening and, uh, you know, we've just got to get on with it.